Hey everybody, this is Hervon. And Nocturnia. And we are going to talk about WrestleMania 32, or as Vince wants us to know it, just WrestleMania, the yeah, first what? one. Actually, Sports Entertainment Mania. <laughs> yeah, can't say Russell. <laughs> Star. All right, um, this WrestleMania came from Dallas in the, what's it, the AT&T whatever... The big nice stadium, uh, the AT and T Thunderfuck Dome. Yeah, yeah. The big nice stadium that I think uh, the nice people of Dallas bought for the Green Bay Packers to win their last Super Bowl. Oh, did so it? yeah. Oh. That's when they beat the. I think that's where they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Super Bowl forty five was it? Whatever. Anyways, no such uh, wonderful holiness occurred today in this arena. Meh. So. Let's go match by match, and then we will we'll talk about what we predicted, what happened, what we think of it, and then give the WrestleMania event an overall review. And yes, we will include the pre-show, because, uh, why the fuck not? Okay, the first match that occurred was Kalisto versus Ryback. Yay, Kalisto. Yeah, yay, Kalisto. Uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. Jr. And, and Goldberg Jr. Yeah, Goldberg 2.0. Um... Now, there's a theme with all of these matches, this entire card. The build was nonsensical when it was even there. Why these two were wrestling? Oh, well, Ryback kind of just came out and said, hey, we're going to have a match at WrestleMania. I want the United States um, Championship. Yeah. You have it. So, Let's go. Um, did you actually have a prediction for this? Uh, or, I, uh, I actually forgot about the match okay. entirely. Like, I knew Kalisto was going to be wrestling, but I forgot who he was going to be wrestling. Okay. So, well, I, Ryback is pretty forgettable. I didn't really think that Kalisto was going to lose the title necessarily, but all right. Well, I predicted Kalisto to win, and <sighs> Ryback has a reputation as a botch monster, but I think he did pretty well in this match. Um, he looked vicious, he, and I wondered if he was actually hurting Kalisto. I remember saying that he um, might have accidentally dropped Kalisto a few times during the match, but. It all looked really, well, for Ryback, it looked really well done. It looked yeah. like Kalisto actually got out and slipped moves. Yeah. So, all in all, I'm going to say that this was a pretty good match. Um, it had the kind of spots you would expect. Yeah, little guy Ryback doing... Ryback manhandling yeah. for a while. Little guy doing Hurricane Rana DDT spots into yeah. the into the mat and you know, all the other Jumping small guy things. the ropes and everything. And Kalisto won this match. I think the right guy went over. I will give this match a thumbs up. It was better than it was bad. It was not a meh match. The build sucked. For this entire card, um, unless we specifically say otherwise, the build sucked. The wrong guy was the babyface. The wrong guy was the heel. The, the match just came out of nowhere, and it made no sense for them to be wrestling. We'll get to that big time in the next match. So... Just take it for granted. The builds suck. We're not going to belabor it too much, maybe, except for the next one. Because I want to belabor the living hell out of the next one. Um, but unless we say otherwise, the builds were nonsensical. All right? Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I give it a thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. All right. How, I enjoyed it. Are we Are we going to do a rating scale? I know that they, like, the, the like, Meltzer does uh, five stars, but I don't. I don't have his uh, credentials, and I don't nah, really... let's just go thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, well, we can do two thumbs up, two thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. So it can be like a five-star rating, but then we're not taking their thing, right? Sure, whatever. Okay, that's good. Five-point five, five point scale, I like those. And then no one will say, you're using the store count wrong. Yeah, we are. We're, I'm not Brian Alvarez. Negative five stars! So I, Because I don't even really... Negative dick stars. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, Negative. next match. Team Total Divas, including Brie Bella, Paige... Yes, fucking Paige, Natalia, Alicia Fox, and Eva Marie. For Christ's sakes, Eva Marie. And Why? Team Bad and Blonde, which included Lana, Naomi, Tamina, Emma, and Summer Rae. Yeah. So, Big fucking fight between a bunch of fucking people that, well, might as well not have been even doing anything for quite some time because they just the shit all over them they'd have like 10 second matches half of them can't fucking wrestle but however the match itself had pretty good pacing 
it was. And there were a lot of really good spots. There were some good spots. Uh, I didn't see that many botches. I don't think Lana knows what the living hell she's doing, but they only kept her in to do like two kicks, and got her out. Um, she she made it to each of her spots to break yeah, holes yeah. and everything, so she she did that well. I mean, she's still training, so I don't expect her to be doing power bombs and shit. Yeah, I think everybody did their parts really well. I you know I I didn't see anything cringeworthy, too cringeworthy in this match. Oh. I I don't know what the hell Lana was wearing though. She looked like she was wearing. A, a unitard the fabulous moolah would have worn except the fabulous moolah would not have worn it half as well yeah it was um, ass was out of this world but you know the, the point i want to bring up I, I give the women props for this Oops, my thing is going off i'll turn down the pc volume quit talking to me when i'm trying to do a little wrestlemania review page was on team total divas with brie bella now last year wasn't she wrestling with uh she was with aj she- was that last year she was with the NXT girls. Was she? Yeah. The NXT girls weren't here last year at WrestleMania. Well not WrestleMania, but No no, I'm talking about last WrestleMania. Didn't she wrestle in a match with AJ Lee against Nikki and Bella? I thought AJ Nikki was, Nikki and Bree. I thought I thought AJ was gone by then. Or was it the WrestleMania before? I don't think I we were thinking of the WrestleMania before. Whatever. This is she's the anti diva. Why is she on Team, Team Diva. Total Divas. Because they're fucking stupid. Makes no goddamn sense to me. Um, And yeah, Team Bad and Blonde is just about as hackneyed and, and thrown together at the last second as you expect. Hey, there are a lot of girls that have blonde dye jobs, so throw them on a team. Um, So, the build made no damn sense. I don't know why the fuck Dyer Page was on the team she was in. I guess because she's not blonde. I um, guess so. <laughs> so they can't put her on team, our team bad, bad and blonde. blonde. So, but see, Paige was, has been a heel for a while this year. So why couldn't she be part of bad? You know, she could take Sasha's place in bad. Because it's not like all of them are bad and blonde. It's bad and blondes. Yeah, seriously. So I, I don't, I don't know. It makes no, no sense. I don't even know what bad is supposed to stand for. I, I don't know. Is it badass divas? I have no idea, but um, yeah, Brie Bella is supposed to be retiring soon. If not, I thought this might have been her last match going into it, and they gave her the Daniel Bryan spot. Everyone cheered for her when she did Daniel Bryan's kicks, and she went over. So you know, I I called this one. I expected it to go down this way, and it did. And the, the, the build sucked, but the match was okay. Yeah. For the level of the people involved, the match was actually damn good. Um, True. But in real wrestling standards, it was it was an okay match. So I it's give it a, Yeah, I give it a thumbs up. Yeah, um, I give it a thumbs up. Okay. I didn't... I don't see any reason to shit all over it. Um, the, just the match itself. The story, though. I shit on the story. Yeah, yeah. Well, there wasn't the story, exactly. really. Exactly. <laughs> It was Brie Bella retiring and, hey, look, we've got a lot of women and we want to give them match time. Yeah, but we don't want to give them any kind of individual spots. They got to kind of, they might as well have just made it a battle royale. Another Divas battle royale. Yeah, so we, we can talk more about the Divas division after the Divas match. Um, the next match and the last match on the pre-card was the Usos, Jimmy and Jay, versus the Dudley Boys, Bubba and Devon. And... This wasn't a bad match. It wasn't a good match. It was just kind of a match. Yeah. True. The the Usos won. And... I mean, it was just a short five-minute match. There's not a whole lot to say about it. I don't even remember the the table spot. Do you remember what happened with the tables at the end? Yes, I remember what happened with the tables at the end. Um, The Usos brought out the tables, put uh, Devon and, and Bubba on the tables and then did drop what was it, elbow drops I think from the turnbuckle okay so there were tables um at the very end yeah, it was after the match wasn't it I think they it was it? after they yeah yeah they already won so yay the Dudleys went through some tables the Usos got a win I give it a thumbs in the middle there was yeah, there was nothing good or bad it was just kind of there I will agree with thumbs in the middle now um <laughs> 
And I think I call the Usos winning this one too because there's no reason to, to put the Dudley boys over them. Uh, Dudley boys are just kind of a heel jobber team right now. So, you know, I guess they wanted to give the Usos a win. Now... Are they actually building them up for something or is it another... No, I, I don't... Waste of time shit. No, it's a waste of time. I don't think they're doing anything with either of these two tag teams. Now, WrestleMania actually begins. We have the Intercontinental title match, ladder match. Zack Ryder, Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn, Sin Cara, Stardust, and The Miz. Now, do you want to complain about the booking here? Yeah, it makes no fucking sense. Like, okay, the only build-up that was going on for this match at all, and I understand they had to pull Neville because he got injured, but Mm -hmm. why couldn't it have just been a match between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens at that point? Yeah, sure, The Miz was kind of involved before Neville got injured. So was Dolph Ziggler. He was he was feuding with Kevin Owens. Yeah, but he wasn't right before. Yeah, it was, so, it was like, a little... They kind of just dropped Ziggler out entirely and then started a new feud between Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, The Miz, and Neville. Yeah, and Sin Cara, Stardust, and The Miz, as far as I can tell, and Zack Ryder, they had... No business being in this match whatsoever. Now, here's a question I want to pose to you. Did, was this originally going to be a, a triple threat, you think, between Sami Zayn, Neville, and um, Kevin, Owens? Kevin Owens? Or do you think that... I think that... it's going to be four. I think they were going to include the Miz based on what they were doing before Neville got hurt. Well, what I'm thinking is, do you think they gave Zack Ryder Neville's spot? Possibly. Possibly. All right, this match was a really good match. I mean, these guys in the ladder match, you know, well, I can't, I'm trying to there imagine. There are a lot of really good spots. Yeah, with, especially with the ladders. I'm trying to imagine what these guys would be like in a ladder match. And my crystal ball says, watch WrestleMania 31, because we had the same fucking match. Yeah, um, I actually. Dean Ambrose was in that one, though. Okay. Yeah, 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 Dean Ambrose was in that one. And Daniel Bryan, who is not around anymore. Retired. Um. I actually think this match is better than than the last match. There were more good ladder spots. Uh, yeah. Stardust took out a black and yellow <laughs> that, polka yeah. dot ladder, which was awesome, hilarious. Um, at one point, Sin Cara got pushed off a ladder, landed on the top rope, and now normally we would end this with and fell on his face and broke his neck outside the ring. But then he vaulted. He what did he do? A, a, a moonsault from the top rope. Uh, Outside the ring, or did he just? He didn't well, do. Well, did you have to flip for a moonsault? Yeah, he didn't do a splash. He didn't, he didn't do a flip. He didn't do a full flip, but he 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 did a one eighty. He, he turned. Yeah, he did turn. He did. So I think it was a, a no. A he was facing them, and he landed. No, he, landed he landed feet first. Up, he landed he? feet first on Ziggler. Remember? I'm trying to remember how that. Yeah, because Ziggler Ziggler caught him, and it looked like a. Yeah, he did. End Sin Cara's. Match, right? Yeah, yeah. We have the match playing again right now, but we're we're far ahead of it already. Um, great ladder spots. That was probably the most impressive one. Sin Cara doing a very athletic move and not botching it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sami Zayn got thrown into a ladder or uh, slammed into a ladder by Kevin Owens. And then Kevin Owens got Which the favor, returned delicious. to him later. And yeah, it looked like Kevin Owens fucked himself up all kinds of bad ways. It looked like he landed on his neck and like he just stopped moving at that point. But then the refs went yeah. over. Yeah, we didn't see the crossed arms of doom, so. Yeah. Um. It, it looked like he broke his neck, though. I think. But he didn't. I think. Uh, was it Sin Cara again? Someone did a big splash onto Stardust, outside the ring onto a ladder. I uh, think it, that was Sin Cara. That was Sin Cara. They were out of the match for that. Um, Pretty sure. Here we're watching right now. The Miz is trying to climb a ladder. Without it being opened, and uh, Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler run up and hold the ladder for him and then push him down after he gets to the top. So, the Miz is a complete fucking idiot. Dolph Ziggler had some sweet super kicks here, tuned up the band with some good stuff. Um, But yeah, most of the offense, the big offensive moves that people did. Sin Cara got two big, nice moves. Yeah, he had two really good yeah. big spots. And the thing that just kind of irked the hell out of me, Sin Cara does that. The, yeah, yeah, we're about to see the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens slam. slam. Yeah, it was uh, kind of an over-the-shoulder... No? Well, whatever. Um, when Sin Cara did the moonsault from the top rope after he got knocked yeah. out of the ladder. Yeah, it was just a uh, backdrop onto the rope. Onto the ladder. Yeah. 
After Sankara did that moonsault onto Dolph Ziggler outside the ring, Dolph Ziggler was the first person to get up. Why? I mean, you, Sankara didn't make the choice to go off the ropes, right? He got pushed off the ladder and landed on the ropes and did a moonsault. But God damn it, he still did a moonsault onto someone. So he should not have been the last person to get up. Or else what's the point of doing the move? Whatever. Um, but towards the end of the match, you, of course, have people teasing, going up there, and uh, everyone gets knocked off. And then we have, in the middle of the ring, The Miz climbs the ladder unopposed, has the most perfect shit face heel grin on his face, sits kind of snarkily on top of the ladder, looking like the wolf that just ate the IC belt. And then we have Zack Ryder come in and push him off and take the IC belt. Great moment. Zack Ryder gets himself a WrestleMania win and a title. This guy was wrestling in NXT a few months ago. Didn't, yeah, he went up and down, mm-hmm. but didn't he? And he's he's been buried, and you know he, he got himself over with his little YouTube show. So I'm, I'm happy to see him win the belt. I can't shake the suspicion he just took Neville's spot, though. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, because... There was no build-up for Zach to be in there. There was no way for me to predict him winning. Yeah, certainly. so I, I sure as hell did not predict Zack Ryder winning. It was a great moment, though. I, I like the finish. It was fantastic. So I give this match a thumbs up. I'm not going to give it two, but I'll give it a thumbs up. Definitely a more vigorous thumbs up than the other matches so far. True. Though. Same here. Chris Jericho and AJ Styles. Now, this is an anomalous match because it actually had a build. Yeah. Now, granted, the build was kind of stupid. For the last few weeks, it involved well, it involved a tag team. They sold some shirts, and then they immediately broke the tag team up. Well, from my understanding of it, AJ Styles betrayed Jericho, wasn't there for him, during a tag match, and so... Jericho got all pissy, and then the crowd was boo- or, well cheering for AJ too much and not cheering for Jericho enough, so and he so, got jealous, yeah. so then he started burning shirts on SmackDown and going, AJ Styles, and yeah. he just stand there for like five minutes doing that shit. Every week. And they do that in each other's matches and cost each other wins until they finally, they've, they've been having matches, and I think they traded wins, didn't they? I think so. This match is pretty much what you would expect out of an AJ Styles-Chris Jericho match. It's a match that we've seen. Nothing new really happened in this match. The only weird thing about it is Jericho goes over with a code breaker. Yeah, the fact that Just kind of out of nowhere, no build. It just kind of happened, you know? So... I mean, you had a lot of good spots. The match went on too long, in my opinion. Uh, it just kind of dragged, and you had Chris Jericho kick out of a Styles Clash. Yeah, which... but AJ also kicked out of a Code Breaker earlier. True. Um, they traded off, kicking out of each other's finishers. I know, it was fucking indie fed bullshit going on here. Um, This is not the only time we'd see people kick out of finishers either, though. No, of course not. <laughs> Like, what's the point of a finisher these days? There yeah. Isn't, there isn't one. You gotta do it, like, ten times before it counts. Well, there are protected finishers and there are unprotected finishers. Like, the pedigree, the bro kick, they don't get kicked out of much. Roman Reigns is all, everything he does. I, I don't even know how many spears and Superman punches we saw. But, uh, we'll get to that later. So, I'm gonna give this match, Chris Jericho and AJ Styles, a big thumbs in the middle. Yeah. It was just kind of there. I don't, I don't think anything I mean, got... It, it was a good, like match until the end like I don't know the finish the finish was weak but it wasn't what it, I expected from that it had good them. pacing in the middle but it wasn't great overall the pacing wasn't good the match went on too long they did nice spots they're really good in the ring together but nothing got resolved and uh, this match could have been on Smackdown for yeah. all I cared um probably will be <laughs> probably well, yeah we're probably gonna see it again Raw and on Smackdown yeah so if you missed it, you didn't really miss it. Yeah, so, I mean, WWE, they will never let a good angle die without doing it five times until no one gives a crap anymore. Yeah. So, the next match on the card, the League of Nations, Seamus Alberto Del Rio and Rusev, with King Barrett, against The New Day, Kofi Kingston, Big E, and Xavier Woods. Now, I, I made a comment earlier 
This entire WrestleMania event gets a star just because of the New Day entrance. And I am sticking to that. They yeah. came out in a big Bootios cereal box. They tipped it over. Fake cereal fell all over the entrance ramp. Then the New Day danced and cavorted out in Dragon Ball Z Saiyan armor. And uh, <laughs> Elijah Woods... Or Xavier, sorry. Xavier Woods had his... Was he the one with the tail? Yeah. He had his afro spiked to look like as much like Vegeta's as you could get. They danced and gyrated their way down to the ring, and a good time was had by all. And I have to admit, I was enthralled. It was <laughs> wonderful. Fantastic. Uh, this can't be a bad match just because of that entrance. And it's a good thing, too, because then the League of Nations came out. The League of Nations came out kicking bootios all over the place and looking annoyed that there were bootios all over their stage. Yeah, and uh, the League of Nations is... <sighs> it's emblematic of most things that are wrong with WWE right now. They are a team that is just there. They are a team because they are a team. And a few months ago, Sheamus was winning the world title. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. He was a transitional champion to, you know... If you want to see a guy less over than Roman Reigns, Sheamus was the only one that could possibly be close to it. No one gave a crap, and now he's in a tag team full of people that could be good, but no one gives a crap because they're not being used. Um, oh, they're in the League of Nations. So if you don't if you don't believe in burials in WWE, and I don't I don't know who doesn't, but look at Rusev this year, from last WrestleMania after losing to Cena to this year. Yeah. Okay? That's a that's a fucking burial. The guy has done nothing. He's in a shitty feud with Dolph Ziggler. He... Which d- disappeared. Yeah, because... Real life. Because Vince got pissed that people found out wrestling is fake. In 2016, Vince McMahon is punishing people because they let shit slip to TMZ. For the love of fuck. Seriously. I can't even... Whatever. So yeah, they're all they're all losers, they're all nobodies, and a nobody tag team doing nothing, and I hope Del Rio is getting paid fantastically for this. Otherwise I don't see why he came back. Um So we have a match. Things happen. And the most predictable finish ever, uh Wade Barrett, who is the only smart one in the entire League of Nations, because he's quitting this fucking company, uh pull some shit. Causes a distraction, and the League of Nations gets the pin and wins the World Tag Team Championships. Now, I'm not too pissed with the finish. If these are transitional champions, we might have Kaz and Enzo coming up soon. If they beat the League of Nations and win the tag team titles, maybe on Raw, maybe after a a, a built feud, whatever, then I'm fine. Not that the League of Nations matter. I mean, you know, there's only two world champions there. (laughs) Yeah, well... But then again, you know, Dolph Ziggler is a former world champion. So, you know, The Miz won a WrestleMania main event against John Cena. And he was in the fucking ladder match. So, you know. Yeah. Whatever. You can fall pretty far. Um, And all of this was, in my mind, an excuse to get the uh, League of Nations out to talk shit about America... In the middle of Dallas. So, of course, who comes out? HBK, Stone Cold, Mick Foley. Yep. So, two... Because they said, there are no three men that can stand up to us. Yeah. So, of course, you know, they come out. And I marked out like an idiot for Steve Austin, because Steve Austin is fucking awesome. And they come down to the ring, and... Fuck, Shawn Michaels still looks like he can go, doesn't he? Holy shit. Shawn Michaels is in better shape than, I'm going to say, 80% of the roster. (laughs) Honestly, like, that was ridiculous. I did not expect that when he came out. Like, no. Did not expect him to be in that good of shape still. He looked the same as he did fucking 20 years ago. Mick Foley limped and hobbled his way to the ring. Oh, yeah. He was hobbled. He's he's not quite in as good a shape. (laughs) But he did lose a whole lot of weight, so. Uh. You know, Mick Foley never wears ring attire, right? It's always sweats and flannel. Yeah. HBK right. was wearing ring attire. I think, was he wearing his pants? Because he, yeah, he took he his shirt off. his pants. And Steve Austin came out in his shirt and jeans. So, like, like usual. take that for what you will. Sometimes he wears um, jean shorts, but this time he had full-length jeans and beer gut. 
There's a confrontation. Wade Barrett, again, being the smart guy of the League of Nations, the only one, immediately bails. Everybody hits their finishers. Mick Foley has Socko. Steve Austin hits a stunner. HBK hits sweet chin music. And then Wade Barrett gets thrown into the ring. Did he get thrown in by the New Day? I don't actually know how he ended up. I can't remember how he ended up in the ring. Then, poor Wade Barrett, the smart guy, wasn't smart enough to avoid getting all three all three finishers. And everyone celebrates. New Day comes back into the ring. Xavier Woods dances and provokes Steve Austin. And Steve Austin starts dancing. Well, I mean, they were they were getting the three badasses to dance with them one by one one by one they joined in with the Mm -hmm. dance and finally after a lot of gyration in uh (laughs) steve austin's direction steve austin starts to dance to to snap his fingers and i guess and sway is that what yeah he he did that a little Uh, bit and then he immediately stunners it (laughs) like like that doesn't happen like that's what he does to anybody that he shows any positive reaction to he's going to stunner you it it just happens now okay Uh, no one good stunner no one will shit yeah uh who was it sold the stunner really well well wade barrett took an okay one but who took the stunner was it rusev the one that i liked the most the first one oh i don't know I don't think but it was, the one that I, I liked think the was, most was Xavier Woods because he just he got a lot of air on that. I think it might have been yeah. I think it might have been Rusev who took the first stunner. Yeah, and he flopped right out of the ring. It was close to Razor Ramon. Sorry, um, Scott Hall. It was a wonderfully oversold stunner, and you were like, "Well, it's one of the best stunners I've ever seen." No, I said that about Xavier Woods. No, nah, it was the first one. It was the first one because I remember I Wade Barrett know. took one. Um, I don't remember who took it. I just know that there was a really good one. No, I'm not going to shit on those three guys coming out because I marked out and that's not bad. But what I will shit on is if the League of Nations is not going to turn around and lose this belt immediately, what a shit angle. They should not have taken it off of the New Day. If they are, fine. But a thing I have a problem with either way is New Day coming out, dancing and smiling, happy as can be, three minutes after losing their championships. They just did not give a shit that they lost their titles. Not at all. They were dancing. They were having fun. They were messing around with the three Hall of Famers. They were marking out at the Hall of Famers. I do not give a fuck. They are a tag team. They introduced the Freebirds. They are a Freebird-style tag team. Three men, any two can compete. They all have the belts. So, yeah, they are the modern-day Freebirds, right? If they're introducing the Freebirds into the Hall of Fame. The next fucking day... They lose their titles, which which matter. These matter, right? We're supposed to believe. And then they come out and they're dancing. Ha ha! WWE booking, folks. Yeah. So, the next match we got Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman. Brock Lesnar! My name is Paul Heyman. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I didn't even try to do his voice. I was just saying anyways against dean ambrose (laughs) there were a lot of funny spots there were a lot of fun spots in this match dean ambrose dean ambrose sold this match better with his facial expressions than most anybody else sold anything in this entire event um did he do that stupid rope thing i don't recall seeing this. if he did i did not see it there i don't remember seeing it at all uh, most of Brock Lesnar's offense was either uh, a suplex or a F5. He didn't. Yeah, he 13... didn't throw him into the ropes. Really, all that. Not that. Not much. Yeah. So he didn't have an opportunity to do that stupid fucking C thing in the ropes, which I fucking hate. Yeah, yeah. Um, when Brock Lesnar throws you, you do not go into the ropes. You land on your head. Yeah, and you also. <laughs> Don't form a fucking C with your body. Yeah, you don't do that rope God, I twist. I can't. Shit. I can't even remember what it's called, but I hate well, it. I don't know what it's called, but it's shitty and should never be done. I it hate it, and I hope it never stupid. happens again. But it will, because Dean Ambrose is a fucking retard. Um, but my favorite thing was Brock Lesnar kept standing on the kendo stick and laughing at Dean Ambrose when he tried to pick it up. Yeah, there were lots of kendo sticks. There were chairs. Yeah. At one point, Dean Ambrose tries to get out his chainsaw and start it, and I'm like, "What are you gonna fucking do? Fucking cut him with a chainsaw?" 
He's <laughs> he's a super mutant. He's not a zombie. Yeah, um, seriously. <laughs> but he couldn't get it started, and Brock Lesnar clotheslined him, knocked him about, taught him a lesson. And there was yeah, there was one point. The first point when uh, the first kendo stick got broke, and Brock Lesnar picks up the the remains of it. I was sitting there thinking. Dean Ambrose might not have thought this match through because you think, okay, I'm in a match with Brock Lesnar. It's no holds barred. I can get weapons and that will equalize things. What do you do when Brock Lesnar gets a weapon? He didn't need them. He didn't use them. He, yeah, he really didn't. He, well, the chairs at the end. There's but... one spot where Dean Ambrose uh, DDT'd. Was it a DDT? DDT'd. Yeah. Brock Lesnar on a pile of chairs and everyone thought it was over. Yeah. Did he do his, was it actually his dirty deeds he did? I can't remember if it was Dirty Deeds or not. Whatever. Everyone thought it was over. I did not. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't see Ambrose winning that. I did not. Yeah. Why build up Brock Lesnar so much to give the win to Ambrose when they keep making Ambrose lose matches? Yeah. So. Right, right, right. I didn't expect him to win. So. We we missed some spots, but let's. Uh, well. Now, one of my favorite lines of the night was Paul Heyman says, It doesn't matter what women or weapons. Ambrose brings to the ring. Brock Lesnar is the biggest, baddest weapon. Something yeah, yeah. Paul Heyman's always gold. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, after that, I think it was after that DDT spot, you should have seen Heyman's face. He looked mortified <laughs> that his monster was going to lose. He sold that amazingly. Paul Heyman is fantastic. I don't need to remind anybody else of that. Paul Heyman is a box of gold. Yeah, yeah. He's he is the best in the business at what he does. I do know what it's called being a manager. Yeah. Fantastic. Um so <sighs> League of Nations New Day match. I give it a thumbs down. Oh, I, nice. I I don't give a crap. And I predicted the League of Nations to win. It was just the match was meh. Um Brock Lesnar Against Dean Ambrose, I give it a thumbs up. It was what I expected it to be. I give it a thumb and a half. A thumb and a half? I liked it. I thought it was... I thought it was really well. Better than the IC match? I think I might have actually enjoyed it more. But there were a lot of good spots in the IC match. So the IC match is my top of the card so far. And the Brock Lesnar-Dean Ambrose is your top. I I really enjoyed it. Even though I hate Brock Lesnar. Now, I predicted... AJ Styles to win. I was wrong. I predicted the League of Nations to win. I was right. I predicted Brock Lesnar to win. I was right. So, so far, I've got Kalisto, Team Total Divas, uh, the Usos, uh, the League of Nations, and Brock Lesnar as my rights, and Zack Ryder and Chris Jericho as my wrongs. I'm 5-2, and two, right? I, I do not stay this good the rest, of the, the rest of the card. I will say that. I didn't really do predictions too much. Okay, well, we can skip past that then for you. So you get a thumbs and a half. All right, I thought we were doing a five scale, but apparently a ten scale. Whatever. Well, I don't want to give two thumbs up because it was a better match. It's it's a meatier thumbs up than even the IC belt for her. I give the IC belt the edge. The next match is Charlotte with Ric Flair against Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Now, to set this up, at the near the beginning of WrestleMania, they have Lita out in the ring. And she announces, she's talking about great women wrestlers and blah, 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 blah. Shit we've heard before. Diva's Revolution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except then she pulled up a a red piece of cloth and revealed the new motherfucking women's championship. Which looks like the men's championship with a different color scheme. Fucking beautiful, I God damn love this. I'm so happy it's not pink. I'm so happy it doesn't say divas anymore. Fuck you, divas belt. You look like shit. Do you miss the butterfly? No, I fucking hated the butterfly. These are supposed to be women yep. that beat the shit out of other fucking women for a fucking me- for a metal belt. You're gonna tell me they want a fucking pink butterfly that might as well be a fucking thong? I saw... Jesus fucking Christ. I saw the Bailey-Sasha Banks matches... In NXT, and even before that, but this is what sealed it. I looked at their their match where Bailey won the title, and I was like, these women are too good for that fucking butterfly belt. These women are too good to be called divas. These women are too fucking good for Vince McMahon's fucking bullshit. 
every time they they refer to them as divas, I would grit my teeth and want to punch something because mm-hmm. it was it. They're better than that. But they, they kill do them. amazing fucking things in the ring, and you're gonna tell me they're a diva, a fucking diva. Diva means somebody who is like so full of them fucking selves and all about you know their look. And their attitude. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they can kick ass. I don't... Whenever I hear the word diva, I think of somebody who's all talk, but no game. Yeah. And it, it, it just makes me think of, like, a spoiled TV starlet prima donna. Which is what most of these fuckers are, right? Well, yeah, they're fucking that models. Is, that is exactly models. what the Bellas and Eva Marie are. That's exactly them. They're models taken from the fucking pages. Yeah. And- catalogs and shit. John Laurinaitis looking at fashion magazines going, well, you know, it, it reminds me of that shit. I think it was Vince Russo, that fucking cunt, who said this. Um, why do we need to teach wrestlers how to act? Why don't we just get actors and teach them how to wrestle? A motherfucker who says that pretty much indisputably shows why he should never be allowed to book anything in wrestling yeah. ever again. So, fuck you, Vince Russo. Fuck you and your Jesus. Fuck you, because you suck. And I... I hope there, for your sake, there is a God and he is merciful because that is the only way you will ever find forgiveness for the stupid shit you have booked over your lifetime. <laughs> okay, I on think, to this. I don't think even a God would be like, no. If he's not a merciful God, if he is a God who likes wrestling, you're fucked. He just, <laughs> he created another ring of hell for you. <laughs> and it will have Vince Russo redemption on a pole match. And guess fucking what? It'll fucking suck and you're never getting out. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> back to the back to the Divas yeah. triple... Sorry. Oh, my fucking God. I hate myself. We got so distracted. Back to the women's triple threat match. A match with Charlotte. And one thing I'll say about Charlotte. I think she's fantastic in the ring, but she kind of has a little bit of John Cena going on. In that, she tends to wrestle to the other people's level. Yeah. Where if, if you put John Cena in a match with Seth Rollins, or HBK, or Kurt Angle, you get magic. If you put Charlotte in the ring against Eva Marie, you get dog shit. Charlotte cannot work with people who cannot do their spots. She is not Ric Flair. She cannot make shit wrestlers look good. That said, she was in a match with Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Who are amazing. Who are fantastic. Now, I'll say right now. Sometimes Becky makes mistakes. Yeah. But. Sometimes Sasha. No, Sasha doesn't fuck up. No, I I haven't really seen Sasha fuck up. She's she's golden. Sasha fucks herself up. Sometimes she does things, and I swear she just lands right on her head. But I guess uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm surprised uh, she didn't break her neck. I guess she's 105 pounds, and there's just not enough mass to break her neck. So. Well, she's also got enough uh, going on with her hair that it's probably cushioning <laughs> it. There you go. Um, <laughs> so we we have the four horsewomen Sands Bailey here, and we expect her to come up soon, right? We have not watched NXT yet. We might do a little thing on that. Um, and this match is fantastic. These women are... Do you, you remember more of it than I do. Do you want to go off? Or did you forget it already? I didn't forget it. It's just... Remembering individual spots without a... Yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of really fucking great spots. There's a spot where Sasha is being pushed around by fucking Charlotte. And she ends up running up the ropes to get her feet on the top turnbuckle. And then she launches herself into Charlotte and, like, flips her over and shit. That was fucking awesome. You missed it. You were looking down. But that was fucking awesome. It's towards the beginning. Towards the end of the match, they have spots where they are trading and countering out of each other's submission finishers. Yeah. There was a a really long submission spot. Maybe a little too long, but... Still, it was awesome because they're trading their submissions. They're breaking each other out of it. They did some amazing catches, catch can stuff. Yeah. Um, Lots all, of good shit in the. All three buckets. of these women were amazing. They were on their A game. They brought a WrestleMania match. They brought a WrestleMania match. These women deserve to be here, and they they blew it out of the water. They looked fantastic. Some of their moves were really powerful. They threw each other around. You know, they didn't fuck up spots. Good power bombs. Good power bombs. Courtesy of Becky, I think. Becky did some nice ones. Yeah, she usually does. And she usually takes a bunch of them, too. <laughs> you, you have them taunting each other, and, and I think Sasha at the beginning of the match does a little flare strut. 
It might have been her impersonation of it, though, or her uh, yeah, softer version. She's usually doing uh, woos and flare struts at Charlotte. Just to intimidate her. Now, I think to end this match, we got... Oh, well, yeah. Okay. That reminds me. Before you get there, to the end. That's a funny spot where Charlotte is laying outside of the ring, kind of fucked up, and Sasha is getting taunted by flair and he's wooing at her and trying to distract her <laughs> and she starts wooing back right right and right. becky lynch is in the in the ring getting ready to jump out it looked like she was trying to jump out at sasha but sasha pulls rick flair into it and he takes a pretty fantastic bump was it was it sasha who or did becky hit him with the becky launched okay, herself okay. she was going to launch herself into sasha sasha pulls rick flair into the attack yes rick flair and it, it, it was very well executed and it, it just shows the athleticism of those women and their excellent ability and they got 16 16 minutes to go at it which just a little bit shorter than aj styles and chris jericho i could have watched this match another 10 minutes yeah there was there was there's no real slow spots in it other than the submissions, I think, went on a li- little tiny bit. I, I don't think so. They, they kept switching it and, and putting each other in different submissions. And true. But. I thought it was fantastic. I was I was buying it. I was I was predicting, well, not predicting. I was predicting Sasha Banks to win and hoping that uh, Becky Lynch would win. Unfortunately, neither one of those happened. Um I expected I expected Becky Lynch to eat the pin. I ex- if anyone was losing, um, I thought it'd be well. It wasn't a pin; it was a submission. Well, you, I know what you eat mean, the pin, lose, be yeah. the one that loses the match. I wasn't I wasn't sure whether it'd be Sasha Banks or Charlotte. Kind of had a feeling it would be Charlotte, but kind of wanted it to be. I especially wanted Sasha Banks to win, especially since she was giving homage to Eddie. I mean, come on, was Eddie she? Guerrero? Yeah, you. You totally missed that? No, I totally missed that. What you Her doing? tights are designed for Eddie. and Oh, yeah. Okay, that. I see it now. I see it now. The, the red and... Yeah. And she was paying homage to Eddie because she says that a, ma- like a match that she watched with Eddie is why she became a wrestler. Okay, I missed that. Was that on a promo? Is that was that during her entrance. Okay. We were busy talking to somebody about magic cards. Yeah, I'm yeah. Fucking dork. <laughs> I'm a dork. But, um, yeah. So, the ending of the match, we have Charlotte put uh, Becky Lynch in a figure eight and Sasha Banks tries to continue the legacy of breaking out of each other's submissions. So she's going to fuck this up, schmoz it up. And Ric Flair grabs her and keeps her outside until Becky Dirtiest Lynch checks. Player Dirtiest in the player game. in the game and the dirtiest, his dirty daughter in the game. Yeah. So, and so the, I think a heel turn for, for Charlotte was a good thing. Yeah, no, it was. She's I'm a fantastic. Not heel. saying she heel turned. Remember when she? Heel, but... Remember when we started watching NXT? She was kind of a tweener. Yeah. Where she was just really good, but she also was kind of playing the heel, but she didn't get much heat because she was so good. Um. Yeah, Becky is definitely the baby face in this, and and Sasha is kind of the tweener that everyone cheers. Like she yeah, does she... heel shit, but everyone loves her. Yeah, she definitely is. She's a dirty player. You know she's a dirty player. Yeah. So we Sasha does all kinds of dirty shit. She has from the beginning. So we but... got a we got a fantastic match out of these two, out of these three. I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I think it was fantastic. Yeah, the I best think, match on the card. I think it was so far. And it, it, its pacing was better than any other. They had really great spots, and I wanted Sasha to win. But I kind of thought she might not. So the first re re uh, started women's champion, which looks like the WWE championship, but with it, a is red the, background it is the it is the it is the woman's equivalent, right? Um, and the the belt the belt means so much in my opinion. Now my belt, my favorite belt, is still the big gold of world championships. But there's a reason everyone hated that fucking spinner belt, right? Yeah. This was the goddamn championship of Bruno San Martino and Bob Backlund and, you know, all these fuckers. And then you put a goddamn fucking twirl on it for this fucking fake wigger rapper. I mean... Ridiculous. Bugged the shit out of me. I hated that goddamn belt. But they got the women's championship looking like Equal to, right, maybe it's 70% the size, but equal to 
the man's championship, the men's championship. And I could not be more down with this if someone paid me a million dollars. I just, fantastic. Um, and it's not bad to have a flair. I hope they don't say, well, this is the recontinued women's championship. Um, because I know I like to talk about, you know, legacy, fabulous moolah, Londra blaze, shit like that, but putting this back in the belt as, as the women's championship, equal to the men's for the women's division, I think having a flair as the first champion, you, you could have worse things in your history belt. True. So. It, it seems right. Now, here's, I, I still, I still choose my least favorite choice to win. But again, when when your choices are Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky, you know, like like our main event was a giant douche versus a shit sandwich. This was not that. This was three different choices of great. Yes. And it's hard to get too mad when things don't go the way you hope they go, and you still get Sasha, Charlotte, or Becky. So, fantastic match. Now... This is all contingent upon WWE. Not, not fucking it afterwards. Exactly. Not fucking this up. They have on their roster uh, Becky, Charlotte, Sasha. They're supposed to be getting Bailey soon, right? We expect a right. Bailey call up. They have uh, Natty. They have Paige. They have six fucking fantastic workers in their women's division. They have Emma. They have Emma's Emma. They have, they have women in NXT like Asuka and all kinds of people they can bring up. If they keep with this shit with Eva Marie and these stooges who can't wrestle and these lingerie models, they need to be the equivalent of Tyler Breeze. Yeah. As much as I hate to say it, Bo Dallas. They need to be the jokes, the jobbers. I do not ever want to see Eva Marie holding this goddamn title. She does not deserve it. Her division died tonight. You've got so many great women who can go, who can work, who can cut promos, who know the business, who love the fucking business, that it is now an insult to put them up on that in that position, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. You have a you have a women's division, and these women, like I said this during WrestleMania, these women do not get individual storylines like the men sometimes do, right? They can <laughs> the men sometimes they can go at it without a belt being on the line, like AJ and Jericho did. The women, they tend not to do that. It's either they're, they're contenders for the title, and then there's everyone else in a shit tag match that's just there. And that, yeah. you know, the, the women's division was kind of emblemized by this WrestleMania. But it doesn't have to be that way anymore because you have so many good fucking wrestlers. So many good women's wrestlers, right? Especially if you keep calling up these fantastic women from NXT. They better start doing some stories for them. It needs to end... The diva, the divas era is over. I hope, although I don't see them cutting total diva. So who the fuck knows, right? But who knows? Maybe all their total diva stars are retired. You know, just have it be a, a retiree love story between Daniel Bryan and Nikki and and our Brie, and then have Nikki fucking around because who cares? The Bellas can do whatever the fuck they want in total divas. No one cares. So that's my rant. I want the women's championship to be treated like a proper division. That's my hope and goal. I have negative zero faith in WWE. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably they'll fuck it up. Fucking, um, they'll have that belt on fucking Eva Marie in a Yeah, month. and then they'll be like, well, why isn't she getting over? And look, there's a difference between heel heat and go away heat. And Eva Marie has go away heat. I think she might be equally or more hated than Roman Reigns. No, I think she's more hated. Because, seems to be more hated. Because at least Roman Reigns can wrestle a bit. And actually get some cheers yeah. a little bit. Like, Roman Reigns, I don't watch Roman Reigns in a match, and I don't go, this guy's wrestling in slow motion, and he's gonna fucking kill someone, and he does not deserve to be in the ring. I don't, I do not look at him that way. Um, I think he's booked all wrong. I think he's being we'll shoved down our throat. We'll get on that, but he is not Eva Marie. I want her off my television. Yeah. And... I find Redhead's hot. Her hair is fantastic. She's not a bad-looking woman, all things considered. But she has overcome my heterosexuality to the point where I just want her to go away forever. <laughs> I wonder if she would do porn slow motion and miss her spots. Kind of, kind of miss her spots. <laughs> so. uh, okay. That's what people want her for. 
I am so glad you said that and not me, or else the thought police would have arrested me. So now, the next match. We were all thinking it. Everyone knows. <laughs> the Undertaker versus Shane McMahon. This match went on for half an hour. Did it? Holy half shit, an hour. I didn't even realize that. It starts out with Shane McMahon coming out with his three boys. They run around the, the entrance. Shane McMahon does his little sidestep dance. His kids, bless him, they try their hardest, but they just kind of end up running back and forth. Yeah, they really could. <laughs> they end up running back and forth like goldfish who are scared by something on either side of the fish tank. They, you know, they, they run to the edge, I and then they it. turn around, and they come back, and they get scared, and they run to the edge. So, amazing, these kids come out, coming out to 100,000 people. That must just be crazy. Um, so these two, right, and the Undertaker comes out to probably the most boring Undertaker entrance ever. He just kind of walks out. It's dark. There's not quite enough. Uh, all the pyro happened before he was even on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, you know. The we under- know why. After, we all know why. If I got lit on fire, there would be no pyro anywhere near me. Exactly. <laughs> there wasn't enough smoke. It was just kind of the Undertaker. No druids. He just walked out. But it was the Undertaker, so, you know, whatever. At least it was outside and or inside and dark. Yeah. Right? I liked the blue lasers. Yeah. Shane McMahon comes out with a bunch of fake money. You know, it, it was it was okay. Um, and then they start to wrestle, and I don't know what anybody expected with this match, because the first at least two-thirds of it were pretty fucking boring. Um, well, it was Shane being manhandled, manhandled, yeah. manhandled. He, he occasionally does something, he, he, you know, the Undertaker just has to try his damnedest to make us pretend that Shane McMahon in his jersey and track pants can somehow hurt the Undertaker, right? <laughs> Not not buying it for a second, but I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it was bad for what it was. I'm just saying it couldn't have been good for what it was. Um, it, they they both tried, you know. Bless Shane McMahon. He 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 did his best. The Undertaker. Well was blessing. I I'm going Christian. Um, oh, get I, out. I Russoed, and that's just how it happened. Uh, I mean, you know, well, do you, here I'll, I'll 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 mix it up. Give props to Shane McMahon. There you go. Now there were a lot of. Things that I could not, in good conscience, buy as a wrestling fan. And I know this is amazing to people. Kayfabe is dead, but you're telling me that Shane McMahon is kicking out of a last ride? That he's kicking out of a choke slam onto some steps? Bullshit. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, so it was, it was kind of embarrassing to watch Shane McMahon kick out of those and, and to even pretend that this was really happening. And then they go through the cage, and shit starts to pick up. Yeah, Shane... Well, well but, let me cut you off. I'll finish sh- one thing before this. Shane McMahon, in the ring before this, does a coast-to-coast, and he's climbing up there, and I'm like, this motherfucker, at his age, what is he, in his mid-40s? Something like that. There is no way that he is doing a coast-to-coast like he did against Vince McMahon. He does. He actually overjumps it a bit, and he kind of only catches the... the it looked like he only caught the trash can... That was on the Undertaker with like the bottom of his foot. He fucked that trash can up. He, he did, but I, he like jumped over it. Like I don't I think, think he, he nailed I, it head on. I think he broke it, broke it up with his leg more than yeah, his yeah. foot. Yeah, yeah. He he actually jumped over it. So I'm just I'm surprised that Shane McMahon could get do it. A yeah. Foot in his face. Right. Here's another event we missed. Uh, Shane McMahon puts uh, the Undertaker what is in a Hell's Gate or a Triangle Choke? So, triangle. Yeah, some kind of some kind of submission. I'm just like. Oh, sake are you serious no i'm not buying it give me my damn receipt back i don't this is this is bullshit <laughs> right. well i mean they kind of actually built it up you know yeah but come on they talked about him being uh, out of shape and old and yeah well the problem is <laughs> we saw the undertaker doing 500 pound deadlifts true well, yeah that made it less believable come on i don't i don't i don't believe the the undertaker is getting choked well, out by shane a number of the shane Undertaker spots within the Hell in the Cell. It was Shane using Undertaker's power against him. Yeah, like yeah. He'd have like Move. Undertaker goes to jump on Shane McMahon while he's on the steps. Shane dodges and he slams himself on the steps and so stuff like that. Shane McMahon putting the Undertaker on a sharpshooter later. I mean, just there were lots of things I couldn't buy in this match. Yeah, small guy trying to use the big guy's momentum against him. But here's the thing. Shane McMahon's not a luchador. 
True. He wasn't doing Hurricane Ranas, right? True. So, but Shin Man did that coast to coast flight, but it was not the last or best of his flights this evening. Oh God! So we're outside the ring now. The Undertaker put Shane McMahon through the cage wall, which Shane cut the yeah, cut the yeah. cage so that they'd be able to get out. For <laughs> what I thought. See, what I thought was going to happen when he cut the cage is I thought that somebody, he was cutting it so that somebody he paid could come and help him. Now, do you want me to... But that didn't happen. Do you want me to give my, my fanboy story, my fanboy booking? If you want to. Now, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, and I didn't think about it until a little after the match, but I had the thought, and this could never happen, it's complete bullshit, and I feel bad for even fucking thinking it, because this is a kind of trite that you will see on internet message boards. What if, what if? This is complete bullshit. It could not happen, would not happen. But I was I was thinking later on the match, and I went, what would happen if, uh, of all people, someone comes out and costs Undertaker the match, and this would be so perfect in so many ways. What if CM Punk came out and screwed the Undertaker and helped Shane McMahon win? He'd be fucking over the authority, he, you know, The Undertaker was his last WrestleMania match that he despised. He shit all over because he's a cretin. Um, but you know what? That would have been the most epic thing to have ever happened at a WrestleMania, booking-wise. Well, here's the alternative that I posed while this match was going on, and I don't think you were even paying attention to me. It happens. I said, Shane McMahon has lots of money. There's a cell sword. His name is Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought when he was cutting the wall down that he was doing that so that Brock Lesnar could come in and finish off The Undertaker. What about Samoa Joe? I mean, I've seen enough Brock in The Undertaker. Well, see, it well, can't, it can't mean, be an NXT guy because yeah, yeah because they're all uh, they're all they're all Triple H's guys. And but I, I thought you know maybe maybe they would do that. I still think CM Punk. Because otherwise I'm like, why are they cutting the wall down? I said that while he was cutting the wall down. I was like, what is the purpose of cutting the wall down? In fantasy, We now know why. In fantasy booking, where reality doesn't matter, I think CM Punk... CM Punk doesn't even have to stay, right? Just right. fuck everyone over and leave. And, you know, haha, I fucked the authority. You know, maybe I, I'm... He, yeah, everyone already views him as, like, the savior of wrestling. He's, yeah, he's the truth-talking, you know, guy who walked out and said, I don't need this company. So yeah, everyone would call him a hypocrite. But you know what? I, I just kind of go, every time anyone says, I'm never coming back, come you on. Know Even Bruno back. San Martino came back. <laughs> you know? Everyone comes back. Um, if you pay him enough. True. So, you know, it, it, it's complete horse shit, and I didn't really think it would happen at the time. But if it did happen, that would have been amazing. But on to reality. Um, outside the ring, do you want to narrate this part? Well... They clear up the tables. You know somebody's going through those tables. Yeah. Um, uh, the Undertaker is in a sleeper hold from Shane McMahon. Yeah, and he, they're up on a platform. Yeah. Uh, sh he was going to do, I think he was going to do a pile driver to him, and he countered it. And then he's got the Undertaker in a sleeper hold. And the Undertaker turns around and body slams both of them onto the announce table. Breaking it, Shane McMahon finds a toolbox, starts beating The Undertaker with it, and then put... I don't know what you're doing. I'm getting there. He puts him up on the other announce table, beats him with a monitor. If you want to say something, fucking say it. Stop the hand gesture. Lean forward. Why am I Microphone. leaning forward? Oh. What the fuck? Anyway, he beats him with a monitor to buy himself some time because he was, he puts him up on the announce table and he starts to climb on the cage and I'm like, he's not going to really do that. But then he sees the Undertaker's moving so he beats him with the monitor. Then he starts climbing up the cage. He gets about halfway and he stops briefly and I'm like, oh, okay, he's going like, to jump from yeah. half cage. No, motherfucker goes all the way to the fucking top of the fucking cage. What is it, 40 feet? No, it's not 40, 20. No, 20 feet? Okay, Still whatever. Still, it's high up there. 20 feet's fucking really far. Anyway, he climbs up to the top, 
You can see the fucking second thoughts on Shane's face yeah. when he's looking down. He sees how far that shit is, and there are definitely moments where he's looking down and he's like, I uh, probably shouldn't do this. His fucking kids are watching. I hope they're but, not watching. They're in the audience. I, I hope they got taken backstage. Yeah, hopefully. but And they didn't watch until they heard Shane was alive. <laughs> I'm hoping that's what they did, but I don't know. They were out there. He does a sign of the cross, takes a deep breath, and decides to go through with it. And fucking does an elbow drop onto the announce table. Undertaker jumps out of the way. He landed perfectly, but still, it was like... Holding your breath. Yep. That's what I was doing two, the two, whole fucking time. Two referees run up and check on him. And yeah, they checked on him immediately. The whole time he is on the cage, I'm just like, please let someone's music hit. That, yeah. That distracts I was, him. And I was totally waiting for a fucking interruption and thinking, he's not going to do this. There's no way they're going to let... He's fucking in his 40s. He is not McFoley. Shane, and even McFoley shouldn't have done it. Shane McMahon is a psychopath. He is fucking nuts. And I can honestly say they paid him a lot. he loves his family more than I love mine because I would not jump off yeah, a 20 foot fucking cage for my dad. I would not do that to save his shitty booking and his shitty company. Not for the life of me. But looking back on it, something this fucking kind of crazy is the only thing that could have made this match. Yeah. Um, if they're not going to do a, a big run-in, it, it either had to be King of the Ring 98 or CM Punk. Those were your, it was pretty much like your two options or something similar to that. Yeah. And we got King of the Ring 98 and I, I just, it was amazing, but I did not like it. I yeah, don't yeah. like these bumps in wrestling. I don't think that this angle is worth it. I don't think WWE is worth it. I don't think this company is worth it. I don't Especially think Vince is what, worth it. Like, the point is if he loses the match, if Shane yeah. loses the match, he's out of the company, he's out of the family. But like, so I, like you, I said before the match... What follow-up are they going to have? I predicted The Undertaker to win, and like I said yeah. before the match, if, if Shane wins and he gets control of the company, what, what the fuck does the main event matter? Like you said, Triple H would have to win. He would have to and keep the title. Have to have a feud and then Triple, Triple H would have to be like, the belt is the power in this company, which yeah. we all know is bullshit. They right? would have had that feud between them, and that would not that would not have been a bad feud. At the end of the day, this was a stupid spot that could have gotten someone fucking killed. Yeah. And tomorrow it's going to be shitty booking. It's going to be PG bullshit. It's going to be Vince not knowing what the fuck to do. Pushing imbeciles and fucking lingerie models and people who can't wrestle well, people who aren't over. It's going to be more shitty booking. This match actually did make me forget that there were <laughs> the, the, yeah. the main event. I totally forgot about the main event. I thought this was the main event. <laughs> I forgot all it about been. Triple H. It should have been. Roman Reigns. I completely forgot about them. But the match is not over yet. After the elbow spot. Uh, and everyone checks on him, and Undertaker gives Shane McMahon about five minutes to, to recover. Um, he well, goes up. Catch his breath. He goes up to Shane McMahon's prostrate body, and Shane McMahon, the little shithead that he is, gives Undertaker the come on. Bring it. Bring it. The Undertaker does. They get back in the ring. The Undertaker tombstone Shane, and that is it. There was a really nice sign of respect before he tuned down, yep. and I, like he, Undertaker. Uh, you know he cares about Shane McMahon, and yeah, that you probably shouldn't see that moment during the match between them, but the Undertaker, you know, was in that feud with his dad anyway, but also in a feud with McMahon or Shane. So, but he just taps him lightly on the cheek, looks at him, they share like this look, and then a head nod, and then he goes and fucking. Pile drivers. Yep. So, Stephanie and Triple H retain control of W or of Raw. Yeah. Which you know, there's no brand. Air quote Shane. There's no there's no, there's no brand split. Stephanie and Triple H, but it really it's there, Vince. There's no brand split. Fucking same fucking booking. Same fucking authority shit. Nothing is gonna change. No major shakeup that I can foresee, unless they give Shane SmackDown. 
right? Why oh, would you they do that though? You, you Story, didn't win Raw, so you know. story wise, he's out of the company. Well, what if, completely? Is that what the what it was? Yes, you're, you're disowned. He is disowned from the family. Right. I have to and give written you out of the will. I have to give you key to the to the black box of secrets. Yeah. Like Vince McMahon has any fucking secrets anymore. Well, he did have a suitcase, supposedly, that he took over to... Uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to speculate. Never mind. Um, <laughs> snooka. But uh, <laughs> let's let's not go on that. I give this match a thumbs up. Um, and he, I just have to get a thumbs up for Shane McMahon nearly killing himself. Even though yeah. I didn't like it, I will not shit on a match where... Shane McMahon did that, and how hard these two worked. Yeah, they definitely put everything into it. So... Even though it's hard to buy any of the Shane offense, it's still... I don't know. I love The Undertaker, so I've never given him a thumbs down. Anyway, oh, even on. if it's a shitty match. Come on. Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez, you would not give that a thumbs down. I don't care. It's Undertaker. I don't even give him a thumbs down okay. in the Brock Lesnar match, even though I fucking hate Brock Lesnar and he shouldn't have lost that way. Okay, well... Should have been in better shape before doing At that. least you are acknowledging that your your thumb count does not matter when it, the Undertaker is involved because you are not an objective party. Of course I'm not. It's the fucking Undertaker. Um, it, it was a good match. There were, there were... You couldn't buy the believability of a lot of it, but Shane McMahon gave it everything. Although... He did the coast to coast. The fact that he jumped from the fucking top of the cage and survived it and didn't get severely injured and did it right makes a lot of the earlier spots a little bit more believable for me. I, I suppose, yeah. If all that didn't kill him, maybe it, you know, if coming off the top of the cage didn't kill him, maybe he can't kick out of the last ride. See, exactly. <laughs> he fucking got up. But, kind, uh, of, kind of. Yeah. Uh, not really. To and his knees. To end this. To end this skit. Um, Shane McMahon is carted out by paramedics and as he is leaving he gives a thumbs up to the crowd and a peace sign he did a, ch- a chest thump and then a peace sign i thought he gave a thumbs up too yeah he did a okay. thumbs up then a double bump on his chest that he turned it, he did this okay so, so i don't know if you saw that part shane mcmahon he did it twice actually thank you every time you come into the ring every time you come back you do amazing things i I hope it was fucking worth it. I really do. It looked like he was in really good shape. Because most of the time, I don't think the WWE Network is worth my $10. A lot of the time, I think they're insulting my intelligence. They're shitting on the fans. They can't be bothered to keep a storyline straight from, you know, for for two weeks. So who knows? They could shit all over this and next Raw, you know, Shane McMahon could be best buddies with Vince and, you know, could be, you know, whatever. Who knows? Let's not speculate. Let's just leave it at what it is and try try and compartmentalize this. Um, the next match, because WWE in some ways did get smart. They did not put a Shawn Michaels Undertaker match right before the main event. They had the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which makes great stars like Cesaro, who won it and then got a big push, and The Big Show, who won it and people totally didn't tell him to retire. Um... This match, when we saw Baron Corbin come out, we knew who was going to fucking win. Yeah, immediately. The second I saw him, I knew he was going to win. You were still hoping for... I was hoping, but I wasn't predicting. I was hoping Mark Henry would win. Solomonster convinced me Mark Henry might be going out soon. Fucker deserved to win something on his way out the door. No. Of course not. not. Um, So this was the Jobber Battle Royal, and they scared us all by having... Shaq. Shaq and the motherfucking Big Show come out towards the end. And then pretty much everyone rolled out of the ring at the beginning and gave them a moment. And Which, holy crap, Shaq is humongous. Shaq is a big I man. I always forget that. But putting him in the ring face-to-face with the Big Show just showed how humongous Shaq is as a human being. He is a, he's, he is a big guy. Um, Shit. Fuck. So those two are teasing this just giant versus giant feud, and I don't think anyone cared. I didn't care. I just was like, please don't let either of these two win. Please yeah. don't let them win. Well, I I was 99.9% sure that the Big Show wasn't going to win because he already won one. There's still that 0.01% that they're going to be fucking stupid because it is WWE, mind you. But I was pretty yeah. sure he wasn't going to win. Fandag- Fandango comes in and dances. 
and gets thrown out. Immediately. Damien Sando comes in and Dan, or, oh, my day, and draws attention to himself like his pink tights couldn't. Yeah. Neon pink tights. Everyone is still somehow, for some reason, into Damien Sando. Shaq tosses him out and gets booed. And I thought, <laughs> please, you motherfuckers, you cannot possibly be allowing <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal to go over in this match and imme- immediately get him heel heat for throwing Damien Sandow out. Yeah, really. DDP is a special celebrity in this match. Tatanka comes back for this match. I think the person who impressed me the most this entire match was, uh... Shit, I'm drawing a blank on his name. I don't know. Oh! Uh, R-Truth? R-Truth, right. I cannot... He had a beautiful spot. In the yeah, he, he does some splits, oh, does some you, kicks. Fantastic. You forgot to point out that everyone else in the fucking Battle Royale uh, after Sando is sent out, they've decided, yeah, we gave Shaq and fucking Big Show enough time. And right, they right. all joined together to throw both of them out pretty much simultaneously. Yep. And then, after their giant stare down and, and hostility in the ring, Big Show pats Shaq on the back and they walk off together. Yeah, that together. doesn't make any sense. Big happy giants going to do giant things in giant land. They're probably going to eat a horse. Yeah, each. maybe a two. Horse yeah. So, then we have the actual battle royal. And things happen. Jobbers get thrown out. Well, uh, I think they were trying to build the outcasts. Like, like, yeah, the outcasts throw a whole bunch of people out. The work together to fucking throw people out and get into little mini feuds with people that yep. don't matter. <laughs> and they... they, they you know, shit on everybody, including Tyler Breeze. Poor fucking Tyler Breeze. I cannot believe what they have done to this kid since coming up from NXT. You well, motherfuckers. Tyler Breeze was a fucking... He's a jobber in NXT. You think he Yeah, would... but at least he was a big jobber. He jobbed to the champion and True. the person who was going to be wrestling the champion. Now he is below Zack Ryder. I mean, for fuck's sakes, this poor guy. Yeah. I... Whatever. So, the outcasts throw all kinds of people out until it is just Kane and Baron Corbin because uh, Mark Henry is sleeping outside. And the outcasts turn one way. They're, they're really happy with themselves with throwing everybody out. They turn one way. They see Kane. They turn the other way. They see Corbin. Not good. They start getting thrown out. Mark Henry joins the fray. And then we have Mark Henry get thrown out. And then Baron Corbin eliminates Kane. So the Boring Wolf, the motherfucker from NXT, who is a lucky sperm, just like Kevin Nash, except I, I'd say he probably wrestles a little better, but has infinitely less charisma. Yeah. The and, Boring Wolf, as I call and him. And Kevin who, Nash mm-hmm. actually likes the business. Yeah, Kevin Nash was there for the Kind money. of. Kevin Nash was for the money. Was he just for the money? He was for the money. He seems to like the business. No, nah, he was for the money. He, he liked doing drugs and hanging out with his friends. And True. getting paid to do it. True. But, uh, yeah, and he, he talks shit about Vanilla Midgets today. Fuck off. You never cared. You know, you won the WWE Championship after two seconds because Vince McMahon has a hard-on for fucking big muscular guys. And you got off the juice just in time to still look big and give Vince a boner. You know, <laughs> I like Kevin Nash. I like his shoot interviews, but... He shits on actual wrestlers with talent and goes, well, you know, Ric Flair, uh, you know, he does these chops and I've been in a lot of bar fights and I've never seen anyone do any chops. Well, you're not in a bar fight. You're in a fucking wrestling match. True. Channeling my inner cornet here for a fucking second. Apparently. Um, so yeah, Baron Corbin wins. I, you know, I, I didn't mind him. I thought he kind of sucked in the ring. I thought he was just a big dude. He's had some decent matches. He's had matches. some decent matches. He just lacks any charisma on any level. He has no charisma, right? It, actually, he even looks bored at the end of this match as he's screaming and flailing about. He just looks like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. His his eyes, they just, they're just, I'm here. Yeah. I won. <laughs> yeah. I just, I hate Baron Corbin. I, I can't help it. I, I want to not hate him. Um... Just like Brock, Le- like if you hate, if you hate the business, I'm not gonna like you. Yeah. Even if you're fantastic, I won't like you. What was that Fuck show? Be- not Beyond the Mat. Was it Beyond the Mat? I don't know. Whatever they did that show where they're you know they they interview people and yeah I'm just here. I wanted to I be in football, but I suck. 
Yeah, I couldn't make it in football, so I was like, I'm big, I'm gonna do this. I mean, how many wrestlers did that, right? Goldberg and Roman yeah, Reigns and The Rock. but a lot of them actually watched fucking wrestling before. Like, okay, in the Stone Cold podcast, and I'm gonna go back to Brock Lesnar here, Stone Cold says, says to him, were you ever a fan of the business? Did you ever, you know, watch it growing up? And he was like, no, I liked Little House on the Prairie. Little motherfucking house on the prairie! You're goddamn the beast monster Brock Lesnar, and you watch. <laughs> he grew little up house in on a farm prairie. in Minnesota. I, I mean, know. Come on. But it like kills everything that. Oh gods! I can't even fucking. I can't stand a. Fuck it. He's the beast. Can't even finish it. He's the beast. He's not human. He is genetically different. He puts on a good show. So in some respects, I don't care. He's got. Yeah, he's, he's, it takes so much away from it. Like, yeah, it I can does. still enjoy his matches, but I have to like turn off that part of my brain that's like, he hates the fucking business. He, I have to yeah. turn that off to enjoy the match. Yes, I really like the Dean Ambrose fucking Brock Lesnar match. And I don't like Dean Ambrose or Brock Lesnar, but I still like the match. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not going to take it away from them. They, they did it very well. But fucking Brock Lesnar pisses me off every time I fucking see him. Yeah. Just so. because of that. Yeah, I mean, at least he has more charisma than Baron Corbin, though. And right. nothing nothing about Baron Corbin makes... Baron Corbin doesn't even... Was Baron Corbin a basketball player or was he a football player? I think he did both. I know. I, I mean, it might sure. be Kaz I'm thinking of, who was a basketball guy. Oh, no, yeah. I just look at Baron... I know Baron, Baron Corbin did, ba- or did football. I just look at Baron Corbin and I go, you're just a tall guy. You're not even... You don't even have a good physique. He's flabby. Like, as Steve Austin says it, like... He looks like he had... Like, okay, for the Battle Royale... He actually looks like he had lipo before it. Maybe. But not, like, good lipo. Like, back door, back alley fucking lipo in Mexico. Like, <laughs> like what uh, Steve Austin says about Kevin Nash. Like, you got cantaloupes for shoulders. And he does. Kevin Nash was a big dude. He looked the part. I His powerbomb was a hell of a fucking move. You know, is, is are you going to tell me that uh, Baron Corbin is going to be doing his end of days on the big show? And you know what? These motherfuckers, they're so stupid. They probably will do that. They're probably going to start feeding them big guys. Like, yeah. I give a shit if Baron Corbin can beat Kane or the Big Show at this point. You yeah. know? Does anybody give a shit about no. those two? Um, so, you know what? Fuck you. I, I, I could care less about Baron Corbin winning. He was the wrong guy to go over. But this match means nothing. They could have made it make something. They could have at least had a feel-good moment. And here's the thing. Like, I think Solid Monster said he had been tweeting tongue-in-cheek. Tongue he was like, well, at least they gave us an opportunity for a new guy to get over. Yeah. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, like Cesaro got over. Yeah, they really yeah, fucking you know pushed him well. Shit on- well, I don't know. Baron Corbin's tall enough. They might not. Why? Shit on him. Like fucking Cesaro's tiny. He's True. like six, He's six five. five. This guy is fucking. Yeah, but here's the thing. Cesaro has an accent that's like really strong. So obviously he can't be a super. Cesaro star. likes the business. I love Cesaro. Cesaro likes the business. He wrestles good matches. He wrestles he- fantastic. He has charisma, in my opinion. He's big. He is eight times stronger than he has any right to be. Oh my god. But, he's like some crazy thing. But like, but the funny. only push, the only push this guy gets is when Vince sees him standing on the cliff overlooking Midcard Valley. That is the only time Vince will push him. Yeah. Right off the fucking precipice into the Midcard. At best. Fuck this fucking company sometimes. Um, so yeah, if they if they push Baron Corbin, but not Cesaro, double fuck this company. Eat a dick, WWE. Eat a dick. So I give this Battle Royal a thumbs down. I want to give it a thumbs in the middle because I don't care, but I'm operating from a thumbs in the middle territory. Uh, they didn't give us a feel-good moment. They put Shaq in the match. They had DDP there. Yay, fun, whatever. They had Tatanka. Yay, fun, whatever. Um, neither of them really got much spotlight. No, I think he, DDP he did, did one diamond cutter. He did. Yay. Then he was promptly eliminated after he eliminated somebody. So I could care less about this match. Whatever. Fuck it. It's a battle royal. Does anybody ever give a shit about it? No. Not after Cesaro's magnificent push after the first one. <laughs> All right. So next we have the Rock segment. Do you want to narrate this one? No. You love the Rock. I love the Rock, but what the fuck? <laughs> He did have a flamethrower, and I did enjoy that. And he lit and I his... enjoyed it all the way up until it became a <clears throat> match. No, no, he lit his name on fire in the entrance. Which is cool. They have the Dallas cheerleaders come out. The Rock walks between them. 
flirts with one of them on yeah. his way in. Because he's the rock. Yeah, he's the rock. I don't know if she smelled what he was cooking, but whatever. Oh, I'm sure she did. She was close enough. The Rock is a talk. Everyone loves The Rock. The Rock has more charisma than anyone else in the show could possibly have. I said he had more charisma in his eyebrow than everybody in that r- arena combined. Yep. Which is true. The Wyatts come out, and I'm like, oh, wow. They're actually going to give Bray Wyatt a spot. And sure enough, they're, you know, the Wyatts talk shit, and The Rock essentially goes, okay, let's have a match. He takes off his shirt, pulls off his pants, and he's wearing wrestling tights and boots. And The Rock is ready to go. And I'm like, fuck, Bray Wyatt's getting a match against The Rock. No, no. they put Eric Rowan in there. He gets rock bottom and loses in six seconds. Now, if this is not a fucking burial, I don't know what is. Now, granted, it's Eric Rowan. <sighs> they didn't even knock all the dirt off of him before. Yeah. Bringing no. him up to be buried again. <laughs> think, think Spaghetti Monster that Luke Harper is injured and he did not get buried here. Right. Because Eric Rowan is not Luke Harper. He's not as good. He does not have as much of an upside or as much potential. And things suck pretty bad. And then John Cena comes out. Fucking yippee ki John fucking Cena. And then they proceed to beat the living crap out of the rest of the Wyatts. Rock Bottoms, You Can't See Me, Five Knuckle Shuffle, The People's Elbow, The Bray, the, the White Family, buried. <laughs> yeah. Fully buried. There is, uh, there is no fucking debate on this. They got buried. Bray Wyatt is buried again by John Cena on this show. They just did it for an angle to put these two guys over. So they better never fucking book the Wyatts as a threat again. They are not a threat. They have been buried so goddamn deep in the last year. I don't care. Really. How do you bring them up from that? You can't. You're gonna have to give them all fucking new gimmicks. So, this match, I give two thumbs down. Yeah. I did not make a prediction, but who the fuck is predicting Eric Rowan to go over the rock? Because this match wasn't even on the card. So... It's a six second fucking match. Yep. And it actually counts as a legit match. Yep, it is on there in the history books. Fuck this match. The Wyatts are dead. I send them back to NXT. I don't want to see them again. That's how buried they should be. They should be wrestling on superstars, if not NXT. I don't even think they should be on NXT. Yeah, NXT has some some talent. You gotta go below that. I I think Nakamura and uh, uh, Balor and uh, Samoa Joe are too over for the Wyatts. Yes, they are. So fuck this event. I like The Rock. You know, it gave everyone a chance to go, John Cena sucks. (laughs) <laughs> I think it was I think the whole point of this entire segment was to show that John Cena is back. Yay! And people people got their booing ready and that was great because the next match was Roman Reigns versus Triple H. They could have filled the spot with somebody else though for fucking Cena and the Rock to throw. Give know. give the Divas 10 more minutes if nothing else. Yes. Uh, yeah, the triple threat. Whatever. That angle sucked. Let's move on. You mean the women's wrestlers? Yeah, yeah. You're right. Fuck it. Yeah, beat yourself. Let's move anyway. on to Roman Main Reigns versus in. Triple H. Main event. It starts out with Stephanie talking shit, and I'm like, oh boy, they are trying to get Stephanie McMahon to get Triple H booze. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, The biggest reaction of the night was when Roman Reigns came out and got thoroughly and heartily booed. Yeah, I think that was the loudest reaction in the entire show, was the booing. The booing, not the cheering, but the booing. Of the babyface. Of Roman Reigns. And he, they, like, his little promo thing before the match is, I'm a good guy. I always think of myself as a good guy, and I always want to do the right thing. Eat a dick, WWE. Give this guy a fucking heel turn already. Shit. They, during the match, they have a lot of spots where they could have had fucking Roman Reigns slap the shit out of Stephanie McMahon. What better way to turn him into a, uh, a cheer to heel? But still, <laughs> you could probably get him over with that. No, that would have been babyface props. Yeah, well, no, well, it's hard to tell because it's violence against a woman, so that's 
bad behavior. No, 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 no. But it's violence no, 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 against no. It's Stephanie there McMahon. Go. There's a difference. So. But I still think they should have gone with it. I think they should have had him slap the shit out of her. Yep. Especially when she's, like, screaming at him and shit, and he's, like, leaning right where he could have smacked her. Like, there was yep. a perfect moment where he could have just slapped that bitch in the face. And he would have gotten thunderous applause. He would have. Considering what happened later. But he's gotta go, ah, shucks, gee, lucky, suffering, succotash, tater tots. Yeah. And, yeah, this is Triple H versus Roman Reigns. You know what you're getting. Um, the crowd cheers when Triple H does shit. Triple H does all his normal moves. Uh, Stephanie, at the beginning of the match, distracts the referee, and Triple H, uh, kicks Roman Reigns right in the nards. Everyone cheers! Everyone cheers. Then Triple Second H follows last. it up with two atomic drops. Was it two, or was it three? It was two, It was I at think. least two. And I thought that they were going to do that punch spot, where they trade punches, and the crowd boos when Roman Reigns hits, Yays when Triple H hits. They were smart enough to avoid that. Yeah, I, avoided that, that is the whole reason I bought WrestleMania was to see that spot. It didn't happen. Sad Wait. face. Later in the match, uh, Stephanie gets in the ring for about a million years, and I'm like, they're going to have like Ronda Rousey come out and get rid of Stephanie or something. Nope, this just sets up a spot for Roman Reigns to accidentally spear Stephanie. Everyone Which cheered that. Got a lot of cheers. Got a lot of cheers. But here's the thing. Accidentally. Roman Reigns did not mean to do it. So yeah, you know, the heel authority lady took a bump, but the baby face didn't mean to do it. So he's still, aw shucks, golly gee, and no one really likes him. Yeah, he starts getting booed pretty quickly afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> that that did not get him over with this and, audience. And you know that's what they were trying to do, but they did it wrong. Again. It is Roman Reigns. They did it wrong. Um, so the match goes on. They they trade shit. They start. Stephanie, who just got speared, hands Triple H a sledgehammer. It, it, it's a few minutes later. But still, this woman should not be moving the rest of the match. Uh, well, she barely handed it to him. Yeah. She's kinda, laying kinda feebly, the ring, kinda, But Yeah. Um, well, before out. that, Triple H, I think it's before that, Triple H... Hits Roman Reigns with a pedigree. Roman Reigns kicks out. So much for that protected finish. Roman Reigns hits, hits uh, Triple H with about a million Superman punches and spears and doesn't pin him. But as soon as Stephanie hands Triple H that sledgehammer, I go, Roman Reigns is winning. Yeah. There's not going to be a fuck up. There's not going to be, you know, Roman Reigns tries to spear Triple H and hits the sledgehammer. No. Triple H is just going to get disarmed and beaten. And that is exactly what happens. I think Roman Reigns hits him with a big spear after, I think, two Superman punches. Yeah, he punches him. Yeah, and it's not until the spear that the sledgehammer goes flying. Roman Reigns pins Triple H clean. So the authority is still in charge, and Roman Reigns, the least popular top babyface ever, is your new third-time WWE champion. And I think at this point he has gotten more title reigns then cheers in this company as a baby face. <sighs> I mean, I went into this WrestleMania knowing that Roman Reigns is going to walk away the champion. Yeah. Um, and the only way I thought that it would not happen is if Shane won, which yeah. didn't happen. That's, if, if Shane had won, I would have changed my tune, too. Once I remembered that the main event hadn't happened yet. So, yeah. Pretty disappointing finish. This match was everything you expected, which was not much. I give it a thumbs down. One thumbs down. No one fucked everything up. We got to see Stephanie get speared. But, you know, thumbs down for shitting on shitting on fans. Poor booking. <sighs> Roman Reigns just is not ready. He's not, I'm not, not ready as in his gimmick sucks. He's not booked right. This is not the champion he needs to be. And you are condemning us to more torture, condemning Roman Reigns. To more abuse. I feel sorry for the guy because he's not fucking awful. He's just, this is not the gimmick for him. He cannot be Cena 2.0. They don't... He's not ever going to be given the opportunity to even be Cena 2.0. Cena started before everything was scripted and is actually trusted to give his own lines so he actually sounds authentic. They feed the dumbest fucking lines to Roman Reigns and expect him to get over. Suffer and suck it They do this guy no favors. Yeah, it... You can't do that. 
You cannot do that. He can't be that guy. He doesn't even have a look that makes you go, oh, he should be a pussy. He has a look like he should be a fucking badass, but they don't put him as a badass. They're like, oh, yep. no, he's he's a vanilla fucking, I love babies, I will kiss kittens and fucking walk your mom across the street guy. And suffice what? to say, he's got two of the stupidest finishers ever. Oh, true. I, I hate the spear. Spear is dangerous and I hate wrestlers. Yeah, I hate the punch. And the Superman punch is stupid. It looks good when he's doing it, but it's still stupid. That shouldn't be a fucking finisher. It's a goddamn punch. Yeah, like the Stop. Big Show's knockout punch. Well, the Big Show, you can almost buy it because he's fucking humongous and his fist is bigger than your fucking body, practically. Right, but, but let's not turn this into six. a critique of Roman Reigns. Everyone knows what's wrong with Roman Reigns. <laughs> it's his gimmick. It's his booking. The crowd is not into him. And Vince doesn't give a fuck. He does not care. Um, so let's go to the overall. Overall, I predicted Kalisto. I predicted Team Total Divas, and more specifically, Brie. I predicted the Usos. I did not predict Zack Ryder. I did not predict Chris Jericho. I predicted League of Nations. I predicted Brock. I did not predict Charlotte. I predicted The Undertaker. When I saw Baron Corbin, I knew he was going to win. So I'm going to call that a prediction, because fuck you, how else can you pick a match when you don't know who's going to be in it? True. I'm not going to, on the other hand, though, I'm not going to give myself any credit for The Rock versus Eric Rowan because, come on. You didn't have time. It fucking was over. It was over before I could make a prediction. And come on, who's going to pick The Rock? Or who's going to predict Eric Rowan? Yeah, seriously. And I predicted Roman Reigns. So what does that make me? You were counting on your hands. Eight and three? Eight and three? Whatever. That's, That's not bad. Overall, I give this WrestleMania three out of five stars or a thumbs up. Um... Not a very empathetic thumbs up, or empathic thumbs up. Weak thumbs up. The IC match was good. Um, the, the first Divas match, they totally didn't ruin it, so that was good for them. The I'd have been okay if I turned it off after the Shane McMahon Undertaker. Match. The woman's triple threat I could have turned it off. was really good. Yeah, Shane and the Undertaker was, well, more or less what you expected it to be and what it needed to be to be good. And the rest I wasn't really a fan of. Who cares? So <laughs> after that match, I could have turned it off, like I said, and been fine. I'd have I'd have actually been more positive towards the WrestleMania overall if that was where I ended it. So the pros, um, I guess good job, Brie Bella. I you're gonna go out looking as good as you ever have in the ring. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> she uh, learned how to wrestle best in the last few weeks she actually was starting to wrestle and now she's retiring to make babies congratulations Zack Ryder it's it's great to see you win one at Wrestlemania to, to win a belt to look to have your moment I I'm happy with that everyone in that match did good even Sin Cara especially Sin Cara for himself I mean he's Dolph Ziggler he's always good I expect him to be the best in the ring Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn had their little face off Stardust well, Stardust. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spot with the he was today. creepy. He did Stardust stuff. Sin Cara didn't botch anything. The Miz made everybody hate him at the end before losing. Which is what the Miz is good for. Um, Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar and won by F5-ing Dean Ambrose on a pile of chairs. Good job. The women in your triple threat, you were all amazing, fantastic. Good job. Keep it up. I hope they book you better. Undertaker Shane. Shane survived, so good job. <laughs> And the negatives... Bar- Not enough blood in the... Yeah, there, there, there could have definitely done with some blood. They mentioned blood, and then they didn't give it. Yep. They didn't deliver. They probably thought he'd get split on the jump, but he didn't. The negatives, the Usos match was meh. I, I don't understand why AJ Styles didn't go over. Um. Yeah, that's confusing. Baron Corbin winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. One, it doesn't matter. But two, why Baron Corbin? You know, you, you guys probably didn't do any favors in making this matter. Um, the rock spot was a complete burial of the Wyatts. And Vince got the main event Vince wanted and no one else. So, yeah. Any closing words? Fuck Vince. All right. And that is our review of WrestleMania 32. The wrestling on the card saved it. The booking tried its best to kill it, but overall, I think it was a weak 
thumbs up. Weak thumbs up. It was not meh. It was better than I thought it would be. I thought it would be thumbs in the middle. But it the, the wrestling, I can't give that Shane spot and the triple threat women's match a thumbs down. I can't give well, that IC ladder match a thumbs down. Um, so the booking, horrible. The wrestling, mostly pretty good. That'll be it. See you guys later.